What's up, YouTube? Neil Gosari I here today on Turn One Glisteners Elf's channel. I want to say special thanks to him so much for giving me this shout out. He's such an awesome YouTuber. He does a bunch of modern and legacy um um matches matches and some deck techs. It's amazing. So I'm gonna be giving you guys my standard green, white, black ally absent. So um without further ado, let's get started. Of course we run four siege rhino, siege rhino, I mean it's like standard in any Abzan build. Then we run four John and Cemetery. So what it does, it has flying, and at the beginning of my upkeep, I gain each opponent loses one and I gain one. So it's just constant life gain. Then we run four veteran war leader. This card is amazing because I'll put it close up for you guys to read it. It says veteran warlord and power and toughness are equal are each equal to the number of creatures you control. Tap another untapped ally you control. Veteran War Leader gains your choice of first strike, vigilance, or trample until the end of the turn. It only sucks when this is the only creature because sometimes you have those hands where this is the only creature that you can actually bring out, which just sucks because it just becomes a 1 1. But when you have multiple of these, like maybe two of these, that's when um you can start racking up a bunch of damage. Then for our white engine, we run. Three Expedition Envoy, it's a one drop, uh, for a, it's a 2-1 for a one planes, it's just an amazing, no effect, but it helps correspond with, um, helps correspond your rally effects. Then we run two Lantern Scout, so what it does, it has rally and it says whenever a Lantern Scout and, or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain lifelink until the end of the turn, which is amazing, lifelink just gaining more and more life, this card is just absolutely amazing. Then we run the one hero the Gomafada. Um we don't I don't have any Gideons for this deck since I don't cannot afford them at the time, but for, as a replacement, because I'm gonna buy two of them. One of the replacements is this, which is um Hero the Gomafada. So what it does is when Hero the Gomafada or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of turn. Which is decent, but paying uh for a four of any color than a planes, I don't know if that's worth it. But since I don't have Gideons, I just run this. So this will be a Gideon once I can afford it. Now for our Blacks, we run four Callistria Healer and four Zulaport. So what Callistria does is when Callistria or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one and I gain one. And then with Zulaport, it's kind of the same thing, but whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and I gain one. So, like, Abzan, of course, constant life gain. It's amazing. Especially when you have both of these out on the field. So, regardless, you're going to be gaining life. Then, uh, for instance, we run three Abzan Charm. Standard in any deck. Some people run four. I prefer three. So, I'll put a close-up for, for you guys. So, for a green, white, black, you get to choose one of these effects. Exile target creature with, three, with power three or greater. You draw two cards and you lose two life. And distribute two one plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures, which is amazing. And the second effect that you may think all oh, losing two life is bad, but with the amount of life gain in this deck, it really doesn't matter. Then we run two Jamoka's Command. I feel like I'm gonna run three, but for now I run two. So I'll put a close up for you guys. So for a green and a white, you get to choose two effects, which is prevent all damage, target instant or sorcery spell would deal this turn. Target player sacrifices an enchantment. And put okay, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and target creature you control to fight target creature you don't control. So it's amazing just for the uh, two mana for this. It's really amazing choosing two effects. Then for the last of our instance, we run Valorant's stance. So for an, uh, one of any color and at planes, you get to target creature against indestructible until end of turn or destroy target creature or toughness for a greater. Card's pretty good. I only run two though because I don't feel like. I feel like running three would be too cloggy. Now for our enchantments, we run two silk wrap. So what it does is when this um enters the battlefield, exile target creature with converted mana cost three or less on opponents or less and opponent controls until silk wrap leaves the battlefield. Cards amazing. Just um sadly sometimes like you may pull this late game and usually when I pull a late game, all my opponent's creatures are like Converted mana costs are above three, so sometimes this doesn't help as much. Then we run two retreat to the Hagra. So what it does, it has landfall. Whenever and if you guys don't know what landfall does, is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one of these effects. 
which is target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains death touch until end of turn. And then the second one, which I use a lot, it's one of my favorites. Each opponent loses one life and I gain one. So constant life gain with the mana. It's awesome. Then uh, for our sorceries, we run two March of the Tomb. Really great card late game. So what it does is um, March of the Tomb for a for three of any color, white and a black. Return any number of target ally creatures with total converted mana cost uh, or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So let's just say I activate this. I can. Let's just say I can bring. I'm a, I can bring back. Um, okay, let's see here. B bring back Zulapore, um, Calistria. Let's just put two Calistrias to make it a better example and. Um, two forces. Uh, and two expedition envoys. So you use this card to bring all these back. The ruling for this is all these meet at the same time. So first, the, the collision will go off. So first you will gain five, and then the other one gains five. They all meet at the same time. So you will gain ten, and your opponent loses ten. Sadly, since they come from the graveyard, it's the same thing. You cannot attack. They still have the same thing of um, summoning sickness as if you were to summon it from your hand. But it's just amazing, especially with uh, Calistrius in the grave. So when um, creatures go to the grave, it really doesn't affect you. Now for our lands, we run three ally encampment. You need this in uh, ally abs and we're just allies in general. You need this, it's amazing. I'll put a close up for you guys to read. So it says add, for a tap, add one color of any color, well, one color list to your mana pool. Second one is tap it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this only to cast an ally spell and for a colorless and just tapping the sacrifice ally and camera return target ally you control to its owner's hand. Amazing. Then we run four Caves of Coilus and two Lenore Waste. So Caves of Coilus, if you guys don't know what it does, is either you tap it for one of any color and then you get to tap and then Oh, and then for the other one, you get to tap, add a white or a black to your mana pool. Caves of Coilus deals one damage to you. But with that amount of life gain, it doesn't really matter. Same thing with this, except that you could add either a black or, or a green, and then it deals one damage to you, or you could just uh, add a colorless. And then we run um, one Evolving Wilds. I popped this one, just one in, just in general, like some, um, to search out, I mean, to search out, so... This could correspond with this. Activate that boom, I gain a life, you lose a light tap, bring out a any like a basic planes, let's just say. Then you gain another life or you get to use the other one. It's amazing. Then for our um basics, we run five planes, four forests, and two swamps. And also I run this another reason I run the evolving walls is to get the swamps. Cause sometimes um Sometimes if you're going against like an aggro deck, you're not able to do the life gains that much and you don't want to pay the life for either Landlord or Waste or Case of Coilless. So I use this to search out the swamp most of the time. And we don't have a side deck, sadly, because um, I cannot afford a side deck. I'm still trying to uh, make a modern deck, modern, mono blue Tron. And I'm trying to buy the Gideon, so my budget is really low for, um, for uh, buying a side deck right now. And for the replacements that I will putting in for getting it's one of the evolving wilds and one of the evolving wilds and the hero go mafada. Those two will become Gideons soon. So thank you guys for watching. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe for more Magic the Gathering and uh, Smash Bros videos. And please subscribe to Turn One Glistener Elf's channel. He's amazing. But in the nicest people.